Hey there, I'm Mr. Black. And I'm Mr. Green. And we're a couple of guys who met in a comic book store. Together we host the Pint O' Comics podcast, where we invite listeners to join us to talk about movies, TV, comics, music, or just whatever. Starting very soon, we'll be joining up with the fine folks at Forgotten Entertainment for a special limited series called On the QT, where we talk Tarantino. Every week for 10 weeks, a guest will join us to chat about every Quentin Tarantino movie from Reservoir Dogs to Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. So Join us starting in May 2021. On the QT is available wherever you download your podcasts and is part of the Forgotten Entertainment family. Ooh, that's a bingo. Hey, it's Andrew Morgan, host of the Nomcast, the Netflix original movie podcast. Each week we preview and review the biggest Netflix original movies with special guests from the film industry, the music industry, comedians, and of course our fellow critics and podcasters. The Nomcast is available on nomcastpod.com or wherever you get your podcasts on the socials at Nomcast Pod and is a part of the Forgotten Entertainment family. Ladies and gentlemen, please notice that exits are conveniently located at the front and rear of this auditorium. When leaving the theater, we suggest that the exit at the front of the auditorium will allow you easier access to the parking areas. Thank you. Uh, that's a raccoon, yo. What, what are you doing? <laughs> Feeding the raccoon. It's a trash panda. <laughs> <laughs> when the three burglars thing happens. Oh, so- and they're all saying <laughs> the same line. Yes. <laughs> No, notice, Jeb, that when they put their hats on, I'm not going to be able to see facial expressions. So that's on you, man. That's on you. Okay. Camera rolling. <laughs> yeah, I, I get it. I get it. Can I get an interview about uh, Betsy's wedding? No. Anything but that. Anything get lost. That? Anything but that. Get my hat. Hi, I'm Mike Butler. And I'm Mike Field. And you're listening to the Forgotten Cinema Podcast. Each episode, we highlight a film that, for a variety of reasons, was forgotten by audiences. Whether it be because a more popular movie was released at the same time, or the film simply didn't catch on with an audience in its initial run. We'll discuss what we love about the movie or maybe don't love about it, but we'll always recommend you revisit it. You never know. You might find your own forgotten gem. If you enjoy our podcast, please feel free to rate, review and subscribe. We're on Apple Podcasts, YouTube, Spotify or wherever you're listening to this podcast right now. What's up? Nothing. Working in season 11. Double ones, baby. Look Double ones. How do you feel about the last 10 seasons we've done? It's, uh, I can't believe it's already been 10 seasons. That's two years, right? Yeah. No. Three years. Three. No. When was our second? This is a, we're in our third year. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's been a long, long road. <laughs> <laughs> Seems like just yesterday we were in uh, our boss's office uh, recording our first episode. That'll My never like that. former boss's office. Yeah, I don't work anymore. Yeah. 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 Don't, stop crying. Stop <laughs> crying. I, I work. I just don't work with you anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I'm working it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, we're going to kick off season 11 with a movie from 1996, The Ghost and the Darkness. Uh, Mr. Butler was confused about the title. Uh, I thought it was Ghost in the Darkness. Which is weird. Because it's the ghost hiding in the darkness. <laughs> that's, well, that's not what this movie's about. Well, now I the know Ghost that. and the Darkness are two different, <laughs> per, two different things. So Robert Beaumont is behind schedule on a railroad in Africa. He enlists noted engineer John Henry Patterson to write the ship. And Beaumont expects results. Everything seems great until the crew discovers the mutilated corpse of the project's foreman, seemingly killed by a lion. After several more attacks, Patterson calls in famed hunter Charles Remington, who has finally met his match in the bloodthirsty lions. This that synopsis is terrible. That's not a good synopsis. That's not even what it, that's not what happens. So uh, See, this what, is what I talked about last week. I had a good synopsis, and it's it's rare. <laughs> I know. So the Ghost in the Darkness has a runtime of 110 minutes. It's rated R, which I was surprised. I thought it was rated PG-13. It's a lot of blood. I think that's why. Yeah. yeah. Production budget of 55 million dollars. It came out on October 11th, 1996. That is a Friday. It's opening weekend. It did 10.3 million. Domestic 38.6. Worldwide 75 million. I would I would venture a guess that with DVD and home, um, home box office that this movie is probably in the black, but it's worldwide 75 million. It's probably still in the red, depending upon marketing. And all yes. That. Yeah. Production company is Constellation Films, which is actually Michael Douglas and oh, well, and Douglas Ruther Productions, which is also mm-hmm. Michael Douglas. Excuse me. Uh, distributed by Paramount Pictures. So I said this movie came out on the 11th of October. It went up against The Long Kiss Goodnight for a good movie and The Chamber. That's OK. Uh, which one's The Chamber? <clears throat> Chamber is the Grisham movie. OK. Yep. With yep. Chris O'Donnell. Uh, in the limited release had Michael Collins, 
Looking for Richard and Trees Lounge. Uh, Michael Collins is good. What's funny is on IMDb Pro, the Michael Collins poster is the one where he's holding a gun in front of the Irish flag. And I remember when that movie came out, it was such a big to do that they, why do they have him holding the gun? It was too violent. So they had him holding, they changed it to the flag. But yeah, mm-hmm. I know. I'm pretty sure I have the original poster with the gun, but I don't remember. And Trees Lounge is actually directed by Steve Buscemi. Oh. Uh, October 18th, you had Sleepers. Part of its shot in Connecticut and get on the bus. That's a pretty funny movie as well. Limited release. You had swingers. I don't know if you've ever heard of that. And then to Jillian on her 37th birthday. And then October. Do you have you heard of any of these films? Swingers. Yeah. No, that's it. You never heard. You never heard of sleepers. Oh, sleepers. Get on the bus. Swingers. Never heard of get on the bus. Really? Yeah. That's why it's Bernie Mac's a character when he's in the bubblegum business. He's like, how's it doing? He's like blowing up. You never remember that? Oh, man. (laughs) That's a good movie. I do like Bernie Mac. Check I think out. that was Bernie Mac's line. I'm not sure. If that's streaming. I'll check that. October 4th, you, which was a week before you had the Glimmer Man. Don't worry about that. Uh, uh, that I know. D3, the Mighty Ducks. Why is that called D3, the Mighty Ducks? Because it just, it, D3, man. That's cool. <laughs> and that thing you do, which I like. And, it, and the limited release, Bound and Crash. Do you think that people know that Bound was the Wachowski's first film that they directed? No. Did you know that? I did know that, but only very recently when I was looking up the Wachowskis. Because I wanted to, it was, I don't remember what I was doing. I was just looking up, like, I think I just, just was curious. I was like, what got them to the Matrix? And that's when I yeah. think I looked it up and I was like, wow, really? Bound had a lot. You, you remember Bound? You remember like all the- I remember the, some of Bound. The, I camera, the, the camera work. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Thinking yeah. about it, it's like, okay, that makes sense. I know that people want love Bound because of Junior Gershom and who's the other, uh, obviously there was a lot of like, a, like you know- sex scenes and stuff oh, like yeah, that yeah. but that's the, the a lot of the movie that's why i watched of, it because i watched I, it in of high course because you're a creep but a lot of the movie has a lot of nice camera <laughs> camera work camera effects no yeah if you look back on it it kind of makes sense that that yeah. kind of led that to the matrix yeah so ghost in the darkness was directed by stephen hopkins who has done predator 2 blown away the reaping and the lost in space one that's uh with matt leblanc he won an emmy for his work on the life and death of peter sellers which was an hbo film i think that starred stephen ray which is really good i think it was Stephen Ray. No, Jeffrey Rush. Excuse me. Jeffrey Rush. Uh, written by William Goldman. I've talked about William Goldman before on the podcast. He is awesome. He passed away in 2018. But if you have ever have a chance to see any of his stuff he's done, he's a really good writer. Uh, he also has a couple books on writing. Uh, but he won an Oscar for Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid, All the President's Men. He also wrote The Hot Rock, The Stepford Wives, and Marathon Man. Cinematography by Vilmos Zygmunt. He uh, was nominated for an Oscar for The Black Dahlia, The River, and the Deer Hunter, he won an Oscar for Close Encounters of the Third Kind. He passed away in 2016. Composer was Jerry Goldsmith. We talked about Jerry Goldsmith before. He was nominated for Oscars for Chinatown, Patton, and Planet of the Apes. He also won an Oscar for The Omen. It was edited by, I guess, three different people. I don't know if it's the same time, but edited by Roger Bondelli, Robert Brown, and Steve Merkovich. Now, Bondelli has done Bye Bye Love, Euro Trip, and a lot of the episodes for the TV show Cougar Town. Brown has done Damien Omen 2, Brubaker, Police Academy, and The Lost Boys. And Murkovich has done Fire in the Sky, Con Air, both Escape Rooms. I forgot that the second one came out. Yep. And Prince of Darkness, which is what we did uh, for our last Forgotten Horror. That's right. So many, so many weeks ago. <laughs> Produced by A. Kipman Ho, Gail Ann Hurd, and Paul Radin. Ho has done uh, Born on the Fourth of July, which he was nominated for. For an Oscar, the movie was nominated for Best Picture, as was JFK, which he did. He did Ollie in the Doors. If you catch the theme there, he's done a lot of Oliver Stone films. Uh, Heard has done The Walking Dead TV show, and I believe Fear of the Walking Dead. She's also produced Armageddon and Dante's Peak. Yeah! Uh, uh, I don't need that hatred. Uh, I don't need that negativity for Dante's Peak. Everyone loves it. Paul Raiden has done <laughs> the TV show The Wizard, uh, The Bluebird, and the movie Born Free. Uh, yeah, sorry. Apologies. Okay, so we had Michael Douglas as Charles Remington, who has who has top billing, even though he's not in the movie for 45 minutes. Yeah. I, I, every time they say his name first, the name first in the poster, I'm like, why? Yeah. I mean, I know why, but of course, it's, uh, well, he's a movie at all. He's a, yeah, but he's a bigger name at this yeah. point. So yeah, the, the, that's why that is. And plus he produced it. So, I mean, I'm sure you didn't have to twist his arm to put his name up top. Oh man. Whose name's going to go first. <laughs> 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 he won an Oscar for his role in wall street. He also is in the movie coma, the China syndrome. Those are some of his early works. And obviously probably people know him as Hank Pym and the Ant-Man and Avengers movies. Uh, Val Kilmer as Colonel John Patterson. Those who know Val Kilmer, he's been in Real Genius, Top Gun, and Top Secret. He's also in the Top Gun Maverick, and obviously he has a doc out now, uh, Val, which Butler and I were talking about. That it, We have to gear ourselves up to watch that. Uh, he's also Batman. He's in, uh, come on. Batman. 
in <laughs> Batman Forever. That, does that count? Does that count? Yeah. There's only one Batman movie that doesn't count. That's Batman and Robin. And that's the only, yeah. So, but if there was no Batman and Robin, then this, you couldn't really be like, oh, he's also Batman. But <laughs> there, there is a Batman. And Robin. <laughs> no one's ever asked Val Kilmer to publicly apologize. <laughs> Uh, Tom Wilkinson plays Robert Beaumont. He uh, was nominated for two Oscars, once for one for Michael Clayton, which yeah. uh, I love that movie, and In the Bedroom. He's also in The Full Monty. Uh, Sean Connie as Samuel. Uh, if you look familiar, he's in Black Panther. He plays uh, T'Chaka in he Black Panther. Not look familiar because he's way older, but when I saw that, I was like, oh, all right. <laughs> really? You didn't you didn't get that? No. He's also in Coriolanus, which is a, um, is, that a is that a Shakespeare film? Mm-hmm. Is it Shakespeare? But I know that Ralph Ralph Fiennes or Ray Fiennes directed that. He's also in uh, Murder Mystery, which is the um, Adam Sandler Netflix movie. Okay. Yeah. I know you never saw that. Nope. Bernard Hill has Dr. David Hawthorne. He is in Lord of the Rings. I don't know what character he's in all three. He's the uh, the king. Oh, okay. Yeah, but who's old. And yeah. Then, yeah. Okay. King, he's on, yep. Okay. All right. That makes sense. He's also in Gandhi, Titanic. He's, he's the captain in Titanic. Yep. Yeah. And he's in Valkyrie, which we did. Who is he in Valkyrie? I don't know. But he's in. Oh, is he the guy that quits when uh, Tom you, Cruise gets fired? You keep telling me, and I, I don't know. Alone now? I don't know who he is. <laughs> <laughs> we did that episode. I only have it here because we did that movie in season one. Yeah, it was one of our first episodes. Yeah, Brian McCarty as Angus Starling. He's in Rob Roy, Speed Two, Cruise Control, great movie, and Filth, which is funny because I think he looks like James McAvoy, and James McAvoy is stars in Filth. <laughs> uh, you didn't like Speed Two, Cruise Control? I have to. I. Uh, no, but I'd also have to watch it again because well, I haven't seen here's it since I was younger. But I didn't like it when I was younger. When so I was younger, if it had action, I liked it. Before before the podcast rule turns on me, yes. I'm not saying this B2 Cruise Control is a good movie. I think you've already talked about But like if it's on, I don't mind watching it. Emily Mortimer as Helena Patterson. She's in the TV show Newsroom. She's also in Scream 3 and Lars and the Real Girl, which I recommend. That's a good film. Ampuri as Abdullah. He is in Wolf. East is East and Charlie Wilson's War, which I believe he is the general that they ship the arms through in Charlie Wilson's War. I'm not sure. Henry Salah is Mahina. And his credit, if you look familiar, he is uh, he plays Shaka on the TV, uh, the TV miniseries Shaka Zulu for those out there who are fans. Real quick, uh, before we get into it, uh, this movie, it came out in 96 of October. It was filmed in November of 95 to February of 96. Four months. That's not bad. Not well, three and a half. Um, they had so- a bad shoot. Yeah. So what's funny is there's one thing I always remember about this film when we watched it, and it's always the line <laughs> when he's like, the devil has come to Savo. And he and Michael Douglas is like, I am the devil. Like that was in the trailer. And I and we would there probably was a time in ninety six to ninety seven where me and my friends would always just say that. <laughs> so so this this so this is one of these movies where I would always, we always just quote it and I always remember it, but there were a lot of things I did not remember from the movie itself. Not the backstory stuff, which we'll get to. I knew it was a true story, which is amazing. Right. Um, But I didn't like stuff that happened in the movie. I forgot about, I was just like, Oh crap. I didn't know that happened. I didn't know. I didn't realize it was, they they did so much in London first, like that kind of right, stuff. Yeah. You know, I didn't, I just, I don't know why I just kind of blocked it out. You had never seen this, right? No, I've always wanted to see this and okay. it's always been on TV, but like, most of the way through so i'd never been able to but i remember watching the trailer was attached i remember i don't remember the movie i saw but i remember vividly watching this trailer in the theater going this looks awesome Mm -hmm. lions eating people jaws the move jaws as a as a lion movie i was like i am in and obviously and so i was really wanted to watch it and then obviously the next year val kimmer became batman and as a kid you know i loved batman forever growing up and i was like all right I really want to watch this Lion movie, and I just never got around to it. So. When, when did Batman Forever come out? 90- I think the next year. Because like I had a note. I didn't write this note down, but I had two conflicting notes that it, I had a note that he was on set when he got the when he got when he got the role for Batman Forever. Yeah, but then I had a too. but then I had a note that said that he was exhausted from doing Batman forever when he was on the, so I, I had conflicting notes there. So yeah, I don't know which one was, which no, he came from doing something else. Which I read. I, that's fine. I just said, but it's funny that you said that it's jaws because Goldman, William Goldman pitched the script to Paramount in 1989. So this is seven years earlier because he was in Africa and he, he heard the story of the, uh, the two man eaters, the man eaters of Savo. It's, it's a book. John Patterson actually wrote this book, which I actually might get and read because I heard it's a really good read. And it's called the Man Eaters of Savo because this is a true story. This this happened. He heard the story when he was in Africa. I think he was on safari or whatever, mm-hmm. and he 
pitched it to Paramount as a cross between Lawrence of Arabia and Jaws. And then in 1990, they commissioned him to write the script. And then obviously six years later, they went on, they, they ended up doing the movie. So I, it's funny that you mentioned Jaws because that's, if you notice, oh, absolutely, yeah. but if you notice at the end of the movie, there's three people. <laughs> Like the three characters in a Jaws, and they're you know like that whole thing. Trap. Like, yep, they're they're, they're the way they are. Like your city city man with city, and there's one person that you know hunts lions, and you know one person that's afraid. Like that kind, all that kind of stuff. So there are meet up in between. Right. There's definitely similarities with Jaws, and and that's what makes Goldman really good. Is if you don't realize you don't realize it, but then when you go back and you watch, you're like, wow. He did. He absolutely mimicked it, but he did it in a way where you're not watching the movie going, "This is just Jaws." Yeah, like, he's not just like completely ripping it off. Where right. You're just like, come on. But clearly he was inspired. That's the difference between ripping something off and being inspired by something. Right. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, the, that whole idea of there's no new stories anymore. Like all the stories have been told in terms yeah. of just like the archetypes Find a of new stories. way to do your story. Right. right. Exactly. And I, he is was really, really good at that. I'm, 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 I'm a big Goldman fan, big Goldman supporter. So I was, again, forgot that he wrote the movie. Like <laughs> so when his credit came on screen, I was like, oh man, I didn't know that. Well, so. he did so many other... Oh, of course. So. Yeah, yeah. The the thing I thought was interesting, which, I mean, the Lawrence of Arabia vibes are in there as well, but I, it, it might just be because it's more the story, but Bridge Over the River Kwai is more what mm -hmm. I got. Sure. Bridge well, Over the River of the bridge. Kwai, it, it, like, that, they're building a bridge. It's about our engineers. Mm -hmm. So it, it gave me more Bridge Over the River Kwai kind of feels. So the bridge is a real bridge. It's now called, it's it actually in the, in real life, they had to... They didn't. They moved. They it. moved it because it was the the, the too too much sand. Yes, the yeah. The ground wasn't right for it. But it's actually it's it's the bridge is up, and it's called, it's at Maneaters Junction, which is in Savo East National Park, Kenya. So it's just amazing that how like that this is true. Like the whole even the cave that they found the remains of the people at the end of the movie is a real cave. Yeah, they tried to dispute it, and then they found out. Oh wait, she yeah. no, it's real. They said <laughs> yeah, they said like no, they lived, the cave. They discovered the cave. They Forgot about it. Then they rediscovered it in the late nineties or the eighties. Yeah, and they rediscovered it, and people were like, "No, that's not real." And they were like, "No, this happened." It's just like it's amazing. But recently, so basically, these lions just start attacking everybody and start killing all. That's yeah. the story. That, that, that's one of my favorite lines in the thing. This movie is it's not completely true, but the most ridiculous things in this movie are the yes, truth. and that's awesome. <laughs> so as late as 2017, because these lines are on display at the Field Museum in Chicago. Now, what ended up happening was uh, the character of Remington is a is a creation for the movie, right? He's he does, John Henry actually killed both lions, and John he killed, Patterson. John, excuse me, excuse me. Well, his middle name's Henry. That's right. Okay. John Patterson actually killed these lions, and he skinned them, and he had the lions pelts in his house or where it was. They became carpeted. Yeah. Yeah. He donated them to the Field Museum of Chicago and they took them and they kind of they reshaped, re them, reshaped them. them. But they are not as big in the Field Museum as they are in real life. They were nine feet long in real life. Yeah. Because of the stretching and the, the wear and tear right. on their hides, they had to cut some parts out. So it made them smaller. Right. So, but in 2017, they examined the lions and, and they determined that Part of the reason why the lions started attacking everybody was a couple of things. They they said, but they said they had dental disease. They both had remnants of some kind of tooth decay, tooth disease that made it hard for them to hunt prey. And they were building the bridge at the time. So humans were just, their, their supply was eat. there. So that's why they were just, not that they were lazy, but it was just easier for them to do we're that. So soft and mushy <laughs> and delicious. But they were, and then, then there's also a note that said that shallow graves from the cholera outbreak also what their appetite. Uh, yeah, for exactly. Like so it's just, again, another fascinating backstory, but it's just, it's amazing that this was real. Like even the part where there's a moment in the movie where the lions jump through the window to get into the train. Uh, there's a, Oh yeah. And it, it, they actually did. Jump they into did a jump train, to the rail car to grab. Yeah. And the rail cars on display. Yeah. <laughs> you can sit in the bed where the guy got eaten there. Well, yeah. That's macabre. But yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. When I read that, I'm like, oh, that's show some respect. <laughs> <laughs> what I love the note is about the most ridiculous scene in the movie is when Patterson hires three Indians yep. who are hunters or mercenaries, I guess. Well, they're, they're, he basically. calls them criminals, criminals and murderers, yeah, but they, so they're good shots. I'm guessing mercenaries. Yeah. Hires them to be in his little hiding hole, which is a, a box. The a rail car. In, yep, yep. Hit a, hit a trap door. The rail car door closes and the three guys are behind these metal fencing where they can shoot the lion from safety. Yeah. And the lion comes in and he's smashing the gate. They start a fire. They can't hit the lion. They keep hitting the bars yeah. instead of the lion. And it's ridiculous. And then in real life, it was more ridiculous. Like 
they didn't hit the line once and it was 10 guys. Yeah. Now it's crazy. I know. Right now, let me ask you this. If that wasn't, if that really didn't happen, would you still like that scene in the movie? I'd have thought it was unbelievable. Right. Right. Which is what I thought when I saw the movie, I was like, come on. Mm -hmm. I was like, that's stupid. And then I read the note and I go, I don't think that scene's stupid. (laughs) (laughs) That was one of my least favorite scenes because I thought it was a little too much. Right. When when you read it, you're just like, they're right at the beginning of the movie. The most ridiculous parts are the real parts. Yeah. And they use, there's, they use real lions in this movie. Yeah, I guess only once it wasn't real. Only one scene did they use an animatronic lion. I couldn't really, I didn't know which one it would be, but they used like, there's two real life lions, Bongo and Caesar. That's what that's what mm-hmm. they were called, and they used them in the movie. And they they were basically you could tell because they're close ups and stuff like that. Right. And and you know they're biting down on obviously dummies and stuff like that. They're they're obviously what's funny because they're looking up as they're biting down, so they're clearly looking at their trainer. Yeah, it's yeah. just good. Yeah, yeah. do but a good job. Fun, but that's fine. I mean, because they're 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 threatening and they're and when they, especially when they're jumping on people. Oh yeah, when I uh, the the first jump is crazy. Yeah, yeah. And then that's all real jumping. How how, how about in uh, I'm jumping ahead, but in the dream sequence when Patterson's imagining his oh, wife with the, the baby, wife? and then oh. I'm just like, oh my god. <laughs> and what's funny is I remember that in the movie where there the line is jumps on them at the train, mm-hmm. and I didn't really I forgot that it was a dream. The dream sequence. Yeah, but I mean once once it's happening, I'm like this is. Well, the lion jumps on a guy at the, the very first attack yeah. is a jump. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the very first attack, I'm like, oh, shit. Yeah. I was, because I was fully expecting them never to show the lion until like the end. Mm-hmm. I was waiting for like a jaw. I was expecting like a Jaws kind of thing or a Lost World with the Velociraptors in the high grass. Right, I was right. like, so they're just going to hide him. And then he jumps on the guy right away. And I was like, oh, that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> they're really showing it. And they show a lot. They do, which is probably why it's R. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, so, just a little bit more backstory on the script. It just, you know, Goldman obviously based it about, I guess it's not enough. You could consider it's a adapted work. He probably just kind of wrote it based on the story, but his inspiration for the role of Remington was Burt Lancaster. Uh, so he, you know, used Remington's whatever to, right. but the, but the problem was that they couldn't find anyone to play Remington. They and, offered it to a bunch of people who said no. Yeah. And Douglas was already Michael Douglas was already producing the film, and then he's like, you know what? I'll just play Remington. And as soon as he said yes, they went back to the script and they started expanding it and giving him a backstory because initially he was just going to be this enigmatic figure. And Goldman, in his book "Which Lie Did I Tell," says that the decision that decision that Douglas made ruined the character and made him a wimp and a loser. That's his quote. I saw. I saw that. Do you think that's true? I think that. It's weird for 45 minutes, you don't see Remington and then he shows up and immediately he's a main character. Now, I think it works, Mm -hmm. but I don't (laughs) see because initially when I watched the movie, very I I had no problem with any of it. Mm -hmm. And then when when he watched again, I I mean, I think it's okay, but I understand Goldman's point, but like... uh, it's really weird because he shows up in the middle of the movie and it's like, what, what are you supposed to do with him? You got to give him something. He can't just show up and start shooting. You know what I mean? He can't be the unknown savior mm-hmm. and not be there right from the start. Mm-hmm. You would, or at least you would need ha- the opening scene should have him. Then you go to Patterson and you're like, oh, I want, I want this guy to return because just yeah. by having him 45 minutes in, he needs his backstory. And he, He's not a wimp or a loser. He fought in the Civil War, lost his entire family, hunted yeah, around the world. Yeah, I think just what wimp and loser. I think like. Goldman wanted him to be somebody that was mysterious and you didn't know and where he, you know he wanted a Quinn yeah. from Jaws. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is true. This is Quinn true. from Jaws. You don't really know much about him other than he hunts sharks. You do this now. You do this now. It's not Remington. It's like a Maasai warrior that comes in from Africa. That's the tr- that. So the the group he comes with, the warriors are Maasai, and they actually they were real warriors uh, who were hired to portray themselves in the right. movie. So you do this now. You have like the foreman character, the the uh, Henry uh, Saleh. Mm-hmm. He I liked him. Like I was like, oh, this guy's. And then he kill him, and it's just like, damn it. Like, but like somebody yeah. like that, like he would be somebody that would step forward and and help. Uh, Patterson. It wouldn't be Remington. It wouldn't be another quote unquote white guy coming in to help him. You already have one because this is obvious. This movie's obviously going to get rife with white, you know, the white savior complex and all that stuff. But I think you have somebody who is familiar with the lions in Africa, not just an outsider who's sure. over there. Yeah. I don't think you get a tribesman though, or maybe you get. Somebody I just who was met a like someone like because because other something. than Connie and Abdullah, 
The only other character that is native to Africa is Mahina. Yeah, it's Mahina, and Mahina. It, it, well, that's the whole you point. You lose them. You, the- you need to lose them because you need the lions to kill somebody who you care about. Killing Angus is just like all right. No, no, killing no. killing Mahina is just like oh snap they killed the the one good guy on the bridge I get that yeah I'm just saying if this was done now I think Mahina becomes a bigger character That's I think all. you're more right that Remington becomes a black guy from well, Africa no, I think you just use the Mahina character and just create another character that is because in the in real life the Mahina Mahina is not of the foreman of the project oh right in real life he was the uh, the gun bearer for Patterson. Yeah, he ended up he was a gun. kid. Patterson, yeah. yeah. And Patterson was not an engineer for the bridge. No, he Patterson was just, he was just colonel. Who, oh, basically. Yeah, he, he was, he oversaw the project. He Which makes more sure sense. Oh, of course. Because he's the guy who you hired to hunt the lions. Yeah. I, I, so. Well, I, because you're going to have somebody who, I, I don't want to keep doing the jaws thing, but you're going to have somebody who's like, like how Indiana Jones is actually, is actually a t- professor, like that kind of thing. He's not right. somebody of that world, that kind of thing. I got you. Yeah. yeah. But it's like Brody and Jaws is yeah, a and cop, I, not a shark hunter. I got you. I got you. Yeah. No, absolutely. But I think you can bring in like a Charles Remington character and make him African. I, think, I just don't I, think, you, I think you need to kill somebody off. Oh, no. Even if you I, redo it now, you need to kill somebody off who you who is important to the project, who you like. Mm-hmm. So Savo in Akamba means slaughter because the Savo is, is a history of tribal warfare between the Maasai and Akamba. Mm-hmm. So that's so Savo already means slaughter. To begin with, it was already. They say it was already a, a bad haunted it's a, place. Yeah, yeah, it's a it's a it's a cursed location kind of thing. Yeah, that's what the lions were supposed to be. Not some kind of like the ghost in the darkness. The whole haunting wasn't supposed to be just like Africans against the white man. It's the ghost of all these people who have died in this slaughter area. Yeah, sure. Coming back, the witch doctors. Yeah, to eat some people. I eat a lot of people <laughs> and just kill them for sport. This movie also won an Academy Award for Best Sound Editing, Bruce Stambler. So, you know, throw out that there. It won an Academy Award. Yet Roger Ebert has this movie as one of his worst films of 1996. Really? Yes. I mean, this movie has some flaws, but it's pretty good. Yeah, I don't get <laughs> I don't get the the hate in that regard in terms of like it's not is it perfect? No. But well, you know it's really not perfect. Uh oh, go ahead. Val Kilmer's accent. I you know what's funny <laughs> is uh, he has it. Hold on. He, he he loses it and has it in Africa. He never had it in London, right? Oh, well, he has it. Because uh, I didn't hear it in London. Here's how he does it. Uh, that's right. He just goes up. The upward inflection is the only part of the accent he ever has. He talks just like this until he has to end his sentences. And he thinks this is how you speak an Irish accent. But like, but I he didn't, doesn't actually do an accent. Here's the thing. Why? Like, why bother? Why make yeah. him Irish? At that point, just make him American or make him Irish, but don't have him do the accent. And I wouldn't have minded. And I was hoping to see a note where it was just like Kilmer wanted to do an Irish accent. Like I was hoping I'd see something like that, but like nothing. I was well, just Patterson's like, supposed to be Irish. So, I mean, I get it, but get a dialect coach. It's 1996. It's not like it's a uh, 1970. Well, you've There's got, what's coach funny is you've, I just watched uh, the devil's own. And that's not, and that's Brad Pitt being like an IRA that's member. He's got he's got a watch, huge yeah. I, and you've never seen it, right? No, he's got a huge Irish accent in that. And yeah, it's a lot. That's more pronounced. And this one, I was just like, oh wait, he's like it was like fifteen minutes in the right. movie. I'm like, oh, he's speaking with an accent. And like, I didn't hear that in London because <laughs> he just kind of goes up and he thinks that's the accent. It's yeah. the laziest. Oh. <laughs> like I like Val Kilmer a lot. Yeah, and I, he's not he's good in this movie, but it's just the accent, man. <laughs> Don't do the accent if you're not going to do the accent. If you're not going to commit to it, I'd prefer you to do just have your whatever accent you normally have and just go with it. Mm-hmm. Like Sam Neill in The Mouth of Madness when we talked about how he gets he phases in and out. Mm-hmm. Just go to New Zealand accent. Go full New Zealand. I'd be okay with it. You're that. also sensitive to the accents I and am, the bad I accents. Am, I am. Which is fine, which is not a bad thing to be, but I know uh, I know you're sensitive to this. Not like in a bad way. You just notice it more. Yeah. That's what I mean. You're cognizant of it. Let's put it yeah, that way. That's yeah. probably better. I pick it out easier. Yeah. Oh yeah, no, I got you. You like you're always like if you hear it, I know you're just probably like, okay, let's see if he keeps it. Like you know Pretty what I mean? Much, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I I really like doing accents and stuff. So yeah, it's a big like. I think that's part of the challenge. I think that's what's so, so great. Like one of the things that's so great about Sherlock Holmes is I think Robert Downey Jr. really nails that accent all mm-hmm. the time. But I also know he had a dialect coach who he'd rehearse to between before every scene who would help him with every single line oh, to make sure he got it right. If you, if you ever read up on like, especially now, I don't know about Robert Downey Jr. when he was younger, but now he's, he's very militant about the script. And he, I remember I read that thing where he was just like, read the script, then read it again, then read it again. Cause oh, he knows his, yeah. The one with the kid. Yeah. His job is what the script says. And he is militant about that, which is 
great, which right. is what you want in an actor. And he, and so, yeah, no, it pays off. It's supposed to feel effortless when you watch it on screen, but that's exactly, all from, yeah. yeah. Uh, one of the things I, I, it's not that I, I didn't like it, but I understood it because I didn't understand how you were going to do the scene without it was the lion POV with the night vision at the end. Cause you kind of have some of the POV stuff in the beginning. You know what I mean? When they're right, in the, wit, in the thicket. Before, no, yeah. I know, but I don't love it because it comes late in the movie. You know how I don't like when they just add something in late. That's why I didn't like it. Yeah. But then I'm like, but how do you do that? How it's do you so do the scene? Really yeah. How, how there's, I understand why you needed to do it. Right. I just didn't love it. It that's should have been all. introduced a little earlier. It could yeah. have been introduced when they get Mahina because that's darkness. Yeah. Show that real quick then. And then if you introduce it later, it'd be all right. Yeah. No, which is fine. You know, whatever. But the Mahina thing is almost like we talk about Jaws where like they're just laying down and then all of a sudden he's ripped from the, from oh, the, yeah. the tent. So, you know, it's coming, but you like, it's, it's like a sneak attack kind of thing. So that's, you know, that, but like, and you're thinking to yourself, like they're grabbing him by the foot. Like they're ripping him by the foot, dragging him oh, through the whole this. leg. Yeah. 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 You got to imagine that skin's coming off as that's why the blood's spurting mm -hmm. up at him. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Yeah, I know. Spoiler alert. So when Remington does, uh, <laughs> um, I loved when they find the body and there's blood cover, all the, uh, all the, all thickets, all the yeah, it's all the red. Brush. I loved that. I thought that was a nice little, I'm like, oh, wow. That's, that's like, that's like showing you that it's gruesome, but not showing you that it's yeah. gruesome, which is great, which is really a cool thing to do. Although I didn't like that, how Remington died. I Just it was off a screen. Little, a little silly. Yeah, yeah I, I agree. You didn't see it. I mean, that's the thing. He doesn't show up for 45 minutes. He's there. He's, he's a main character. You've given him a backstory. Right. You've invested into him. You're killing him off screen. He doesn't deserve an off screen death if you're going to give him an on, you know, that kind of a right. bulkier role. Like every other character that dies gets a shot. Even yeah. like the secondary characters, even everybody in the hospital other than the doctor who you don't know died. That's kind of supposed to be like the surprise. Oh, he did die when he went out yeah, there, uh, but you but knew he was not, going to, yeah. he was like, I got to go to my hospital. Remington, like you don't know he's, he's all of a sudden, Oh wait. So he's just dead. You almost want something where everyone else is sleeping. Remington's putting the fire out and he knows that something he's trying to get his gun. And, like just, An accepts, you don't have to show it, it. Yeah. But you have to at least acknowledge it. Yeah. Don't, don't give it to us. Like Patterson has a scary dream about his wife, Beanie and wakes up. And then he notices the tense ranch that yeah. ransacked. That, that that's that's too, that's not enough. That he needs more. If you're gonna give him main character stuff, he needs a main character death. Yep. Then, absolutely. Absolutely. Other thing is uh how about that 90s film technique of slow motion ramping when they, they have the slow motion, like they're walking, there's just like nin, 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 nin. it's not super slow-mo, but it everything like sl slightly yeah. slow mo. That's huge nineties. I mean, no, oh, they yeah. still kind of do that now, but that's a big time nineties. Oh, movie. absolutely. They do that a little bit with that first lion jump too. They slow yeah. it down. Yeah. And I'm just like, mm. I like, I love the first lion jump, but the fact that they slow it down, I was like, eh, no. I don't, I so, got it. He jumped. So let's hear about what Stephen Hopkins said about his movie. Nah, he doesn't like the movie yet. I know. <laughs> so in 1999, Stephen Hopkins did an interview with S SFX magazine. Mm -hmm. How making the movie was the worst experience as a filmmaker. Quote, a true nightmare. Uh, Douglas, who was, this is from Stephen Hopkins. Douglas, who was producing a film, decided at the last minute to play Remington character. But even before the filming began, the relationship between them was very tense. Douglas went and had the movie completely recut in post-production, removing 45 minutes of scenes in order to have, give himself more screen time. Uh, now, granted, these are off the internet, so I, don't, I can't right. really vouch for that. But I guess it also explains story parts that go nowhere, plot holes that the movie has. Like, for example, a part where the story jumps from having only few people killed by lions, only for characters. The next scene mentioned how number. So basically they say like five or six people are dead. And then 10 minutes later, it's like 40 people. Yeah. I, sudden, I didn't catch I that. I did a little bit. I go, oh, I would have liked to have known where like probably a few weeks afterwards. That's what, but that to me was told me of the passage of time. That's what oh, I sure, thought it yeah, was. Yeah. I wasn't, I wasn't big on that, but I did notice. I was like, oh, okay. Passage yeah. of time. Quote, Hopkins said we had snake bites, scorpion bites, tick bite fever, people getting hit by lightning, floods, torrential rains and lightning storms, hippos chasing people through the water, <laughs> cars getting swept into the water and several deaths of crew members, including two drownings. Val came to the set under the worst conditions imaginable. He was completely exhausted from doing the Island of Dr. Moreau. That was, we were talking about before, Butler. Yeah. He was dealing with unfavorable publicity from the set. He was going through a divorce. He barely had time to get his teeth into the role before he started filming. And he's nearly in every scene in this movie. But I worked with him six or seven days a week for four months under real adverse conditions. And he really came through. He had a passion for this film. That is from Hopkins. So you're shooting in, you're shooting on location in Africa. It's going to be tough. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Obviously, Hopkins does not have a good time on this movie. 
I don't, I mean, the whole stuff with Douglas, I don't know. I, I, I can't really, who cares? I don't, at this point, you, you did a completed finished product. He is the producer. So, I mean, he's going to have say in a movie that Not he's putting he's his producer, name on. He's Michael Douglas. Yeah, I know. I, I, I get it. I get why, you know, let, I'm sorry, Stephen Hopkins, but your Predator 2 cred does not trump his uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. being Michael Douglas. Predator 2 is not bad, though. It's okay. It's it's poorly. Com- it's unfairly compared to Predator 1, which you're never going to top. Or as it's called, Predator. Um, no one calls it Predator 1. The first brother. Predator. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, I mean, I can understand all the stuff that went into, like, all oh, the snake bites of score. But it, you're, yeah, because yeah. You're, you're on location in, like... In the wild, the wilderness, yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. Hippos chasing people is no joke, man. They're the most dangerous animals in the world. And the Alan and Dr. Moreau, man, we could probably do four hours in that movie. Oh, there's so much, yeah. It's it, what a shit show. <laughs> I mean, it, I'm not even talking about if the good or not, if you oh, like just the, movie the making not, of the movie, just the whole everything around Insane. the movie. Yeah, oh, just, <laughs> just I'm sure there'll be a doc soon about it. <laughs> <laughs> You do a movie about just do a, a fiction movie about the making of the movie. Yeah, yeah. I guess so. We kind of been going all around with this movie. Overall, I think it's a good movie. I I enjoyed the movie. I do think that there are there are things that could be added to it. There are things that could be changed about it. But the the meat and bones is still a decent film. I think it does what it's supposed to do well, which is hunting down these lions in the wilderness being a kind of jaws with lions kind of movie. I think it does that really well. Well, I think it's a simple story and I say that in not in a demeaning way. It's, it's these lions are killing people. Only we have to stop them. Yeah. You know, and here's some character. It's it, stories don't have to be complex, right? Your motivations for all your characters are very simple as well. Yeah. Patterson wants to see Africa. He wants to protect and get this mm-hmm. project done. He, he, yeah, he wants to get it. He loves he loves the continent. Remington, I think also it's funny because I think the Remington character also loves the continent, but for mm-hmm. different reasons because it's not where he's from. He, it you know he's not his family was in, uh, in the states. They right. talk about how they are all murdered and killed, and he came over here to just kind of live out his life. And this is what he does. He's found these warriors. Let's talk about what he drinks. Did you hear that? Did you read that note? Blood, milk, and piss from a cow. Yeah, well, I was going to say urine, but yeah, okay. <laughs> it's gross when you say piss. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, disgusting. But I, I do mean, hey, whatever, man. So warriors drink. That's uh, how you got to prove that you're brave. I, I'm not brave. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I guess that's not going to be for me. <laughs> I guess what I thought was interesting is, did you read a thing about the Maasai and cows or and cattle? Yeah, that they their property. They believe that they're their property. That God, yeah, they're yeah, God, God, God or gods yeah. gave them the cattle. Yeah. So I guess they just take cattle wherever they see it because they're like, eh, it's which fine. is probably where you get the war the warfare war between the cattle. Oh, absolutely, yeah, absolutely. No, 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 no doubt. Stop taking our cows, man. No doubt, no doubt. <laughs> but I was, I was really, I thought it was really cool that they actually hired actual warriors for that scene. When oh, they first sure. Show. Yeah. I thought that was pretty cool because you're, it's authentic, and you're like, oh, okay, all right, you know. Yep. Um. So I thought that was cool. I mean, d- did they? They paid them money, right? They didn't pay them in cattle, right? I didn't see that note. Oh, it's a modern tribe. They I, probably ho- took, I they hope probably they paid the money. money. Yeah, I mean, I hope it wasn't just like and hey, they might man. have also taken some cattle. Oh, maybe food too, but who knows? But I thought that was pretty cool. Um, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> I lost my note. Damn it! What was I going to talk about? Oh, did you like the uh, the lamps they had? The the uh, I mean, I've seen those lamps used in films before, but I've never seen one so close to somebody's junk before. I, I and laugh. he reaches over and lights I it because my quote was like, "Light my crotch." <laughs> so I yeah, the they, same note going. I would not be as as comfortable yeah. as. So obviously, they don't have flashlights in the eighteen nineties. Eighteen nineties, yeah. 18, 18. Um, they had these lanterns. That, so, but they're lanterns that are attached to their belts because this is when they go into the cave for the lion cave, and um. But it's like a, it's like a, I guess it's, it's not a candle. It's a, it's like a gas lantern. It's a little gas lantern. Yeah. yeah. And it's on Douglas's or Remington's belt, belt right, right by his crotch. And so like, 
Patterson leans over and just like starts laying it. I'm just like, oh, what's going on here? <laughs> but the next scene, I don't know if you noticed this, the next scene when they're in the cave and the light shines, it's like it's like a flashlight light. It's oh like, yeah, it's a white, it's a bright yeah, white light. That's like a that's not from the the lantern. I was not I, I liked that scene. I liked seeing all the bones, but yeah, I think the lighting really took me out. I think it would would have worked a lot better with a a dimmer, you know, flickering red light. Yeah. I think that would have made it look creepier, a little bit more horror kind of like and not showing you that there are no lions in here i'd have preferred like you don't see anything beyond the bones you don't see the walls of the cave because you won't know that you know are the lions in there with them or not well someone painted the lion on the cave so it was clearly like a very old <laughs> cave yeah uh i i actually wanted to see I, I wish there was more of connie stuff like they kind of they kind of mention how he's afraid he's afraid of lions he brings that up yeah but they never tell they never go why. he talks uh, he has that line about his four wives where patterson talks about he can't wait he's like <laughs> i i hate all my wives i don't like any of yeah my wives. i know <laughs> but like he doesn't i kind of wanted him to have more to do with getting the lions or more to do with being a part of the ending he is kind of but he just throws the gun at so at the end of the movie Remington dies. Mm -hmm. He gets murdered and they, they burn him. Yep. And then Patterson just grabs the torch and just starts lighting up the screw it. Let's go get that last yes. lion. Yeah. He, he, Cause they kill one lion before he starts lighting up the, the, I don't know. It's not wheat, but the field, the brush. Yeah. To, to push the lion out, to, to push to attack. And then him and Connie are going to wait and shoot the lion. And then he's there. A lion comes up. They have a huge on the broken bridge and he gets stuck on a tree. The lion's climbing the tree. Connie goes up to the next tree and, throws his rifle to Patterson. It's like, why don't you just shoot? Like uh, the line was on the opposite side of no, the tree. I, they showed I, that. I, I'm saying that I wanted him to be more active, not just, Hey, here you go. Like, oh, okay. I, you know, I wanted him to be involved in that. Yeah. But you, Samuel couldn't be the one that kills the lion. I, it didn't have to be for that. I just meant like he needed, I wanted to, to actively be, to, take act, that shot, to actively shoot the lion. Showing that he's no longer. Afraid. Right. And then, then here you go. Here's then Patterson drops, gets the gun that he dropped and then he shoots the lion. Right. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. I think that, Samuel needed a little bit more of if he's supposed to be. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, I keep saying Connie. That's the name of the actor. I apologize. Thing. It's Samuel. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. if I keep. I have it. You know why? Because I have the name right in front right of me. Thing. My my apologies, Samuel. Uh, I do that all the time. No, I know. I know. Um, I, I hate doing that. I'm sorry. But if, if Samuel's supposed to be Hooper, right from Jaws? No. Uh well, technically, because he knows the landscape. Yes. So he should be a little bit more of a lion expert or a wildlife expert. Not necessarily that's his job. He, he knows, but he knows Africa. Be the He's person. He knows, yes. yeah. yeah. You don't really use him as that. You use you him don't. as Patterson's friend, which is great, but you don't, you should use him as this, this beacon of knowledge, mm -hmm. especially when your other two surviving guys are two white guys, even if Remington has lived in Africa for a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, Samuel's still the guy who should be the one, the expert. See, see, I think Remington's Give Quint. Samuel more. I think Remington's Quint. Oh, he's absolutely yeah. Quint, yeah. So, but Samuel's got to be that expert then, that guy who's like, yeah, you might know how the lions are, but you don't know how they think. Yeah, he he could be more of a thinking man's guy. Yeah. Like he's not somebody who does. Yeah, he doesn't get involved. Yeah, yeah. And like maybe Remington's like, yeah, the lions will want this, this. So he goes, mm -hmm. yeah, but the lions need water. And you know, in two days, it's the rains don't fall, and then you get this line. Sure, kind of, they're sure. Gonna be something in this like basin. that. Yeah, have him be more of the team other than that guy who goes, "Wow, guys, what are we doing next?" But again, now now we're sitting here adding stuff to the movie where I just. But said, there was stuff I, that I, forty-five minutes cut out of the movie well, that could all be there. Do you, I don't think this movie. I don't think that I would like this movie as much. Maybe I would if it was two hours and fifteen minutes. The fact that it's one hundred and ten minutes long, it's under two hours. It's short. It's, it's to the point. Two hours. I, yeah, I don't want it to be. I don't think it should go any further than two twenty. But I'd be okay with. 30 more minutes. Because it's essentially a monster film. It's it's a monster movie. The monsters sure. are here. We have to fight them. Let's go. The that's monster it. just happens to be a real animal that exists. Right. No, a real animal that murdered people. And I think that that's part of the reason why I like this movie oh, as well is because it's based on true events. It's pretty, it, with the exception of the Remington creation, the creation of Remington's character, it's pretty on point with what happened. You know, just kind of like it That's kind of is, thing I you know really what I mean? Like is, it's faithful to yeah. the, to what happened in real life. Things are way different. The characters and their jobs and positions are all made up, but the actual actions of the lions, the craziest stuff. Yeah. The, the main plot points of the story are all actually happened. And that's what Samuel says in the beginning. He, he, he's got the, does he have the voiceover at the end? He has, that's one note I don't like. Yes. Samuel does the voiceover throughout almost all the movie. 
But then Patterson has a bunch of voiceovers where he's writing the letters. When he's writing the letters. And I don't like the double. I don't like the double the, voiceover. We, but does Samuel bookend the movie with voiceovers? Yes. Okay, I can't remember what he says at the end then. Did I fall Just asleep? that Patterson was happy. We built the bridge. Gotcha. You can still. He talks about you can see the lion yes. at the museum. Yes. So in the beginning of the movie, but he talks about how it, the beginning of the movie, the most I, ridiculous parts. Yeah, of the story yeah. Are true. And you're just like, all right, let's hear it. And then they show the picture of the bridge at well, the end. He, you're like, all right, let's hear it. And I was like, all right, but I didn't really believe it. And then you're reading the things, and I'm like, Jesus. I almost thought like I j- I don't want to watch this movie again tomorrow because I just watched it yesterday. But I want to watch. I I really do want to watch this movie again maybe this year remembering the parts of the story that are true because i think i'd like this movie better knowing that the craziest stuff was real would you not like it better though knowing what how douglas got into the role all that stuff i no one likes hearing when people don't have a good time on a movie that you watched you know what i mean no one likes oh, hearing I that it was that. such yeah. A, yeah that it was a crappy shoot yeah, yeah, yeah. people died yeah you know, no one wants well, to hear no that no one wants to hear that obviously. no i mean like, i meant like that they didn't enjoy, like they hopkins didn't, didn't like the movie oh yeah that yeah. always that always shades it obviously yeah. I'd look at Remington's performance to see like where he is, but he's clearly hamming it up. His, oh yeah, his, well, his yeah. entrance. I hated his entrance. Oh, when he puts the gun to Abdullah's head, head. Abdullah's head, yeah. and he's his lines are absolutely Clint Eastwood. Of course, like, am I gonna do it? Do you feel luck? Do well, you feel lucky, punk? I'm like mm-hmm. r- watching that scene already. When I watched, it, I was like, he, 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 because I knew he produced it. I was like. He made those lines himself. He wrote those lines himself. Well, he probably had it. Yeah, he's kind of like the old, it's probably like the old West style, you know, like, I, yeah, I get that. I, I had a laugh though when they were putting all the blood on the hospital. It's just like more blood. Like, like you, how many cattle, how many animals did you slaughter for this blood? Jesus. A lot. And it didn't work. <laughs> Not at all. They all went for the hospital. Yeah. Oh, such a great scene. Oh, when they're just eating people? Well, they're just killing the people left and right. Just, oh, go bite your neck. Oh, hide oh, under the bed. Oh, climbing up man, on the tent. I know. Goes down on that guy's head when he wakes up. Yep. Just, oh, just murdering because they like murdering. <laughs> well, they're hungry. I like killing. <laughs> it's like uh, that character from Rick and Morty, the assassin. Krambopulous Michael. Maze Krambopulous Michael. I'll kill anything you want. I just love killing. <laughs> <laughs> they already ate. They ate two days ago. No lion would eat now again. Oh, uh, well, yeah. When he <laughs> says that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, how about when he's examining the first body and he's like, they licked his skin. This off. is not a boating. Oh, sorry, bro. <laughs> Licked his skin off so they could drink the blood. And yeah. The I'm like, I was like, Ugh. really? Gross. <laughs> I was like, that's, that's icky. I don't like that. <laughs> it's icky. <laughs> like, oh. I like the guy that comes to replace Starling. Cause Starling oh, is not, he's the religious. He's there for the people's faith. And he's religion. there to convert people. Pretty much. He's uh, step two in the plan to, yes, uh, the, yeah. to add you know your, white power to Africa. Do you know your British history? Yes. <laughs> um, but Step yes. one, bridges and railroads. Step two, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Exactly. That's why he's there. And when the guy that replaces him at the end, he's like, oh, I wish I could have been here. And he's like, no, you don't. I love that line. <laughs> <laughs> he say, he he says what we're all thinking. <laughs> yeah, it's like no, you, you do not Come wish on. you could, but get lost. I wish yeah. I could be there, the lion killer. He, he, he Did like you see how many people yeah. got killed. He had like fifty people, man. You don't wish you could yeah. be here. You were not going to be the one that survived. <laughs> you are not my friend. That's my friend. He's the one that survived. Yeah, we had a, we had the best guy here, and he died. <laughs> <laughs> I got lucky <laughs> twice. I got lucky. Yeah, that's there were a couple of things times in the movie where it, it was. I was like, don't, should we be more afraid? Like, we're just going to go to bed now. Like, we're just going to camp out. Like, we know that they're night hunters, but oh, well, we're just going to no, know. There's no talk of standing guard. There's just talk of putting up those thorny bridges, which they do. The fence of the, the thorny, thorny fences. Yep. The thorny fence stuff where they, they drag all that, all those uh, thick thorny bushes to create a wall. They do all that in real life. But there's no talk of like guards. There's no talk of just kind of like. The tenseness of well, he wants you know, Beaumont to give him soldiers, which he says no to. But you do see that they've got a few guards. They yeah. do have a few people that walk around with rifles and stuff. But I guess it's just not enough. Yeah, I would have been. I even would have been okay in the movie if Beaumont got in because he was. It's like he was just like I'm going to play this as a jerk. Yeah. My note for the movie is I like Tom Wilkinson, but I really don't like his Beaumont. I don't know if that, I wonder if that was his decision or. I mean, the lines are just bad. Hopkins the, decision or it was just like. You know, he's not a nice guy and what he's doing is not nice. He's based, you know, he's, I'm, I'm not a nice guy. I'm a monster. <laughs> like I love, I pa- I love Patterson's, 
Patterson has an idealistic viewing of what he's doing. Like, I love bridging cultures together. It's like, yeah, but that's not what you're doing here, man. You're essentially colonizing a kind of that doesn't want it. And you're helping, you're helping, you know, men, white men come down here and do whatever they want. It's like, I understand what you're saying, Patterson, but like, Big picture, man. You are, I mean, I get it, but you are not helping anyone out that, I'm anyone sure, of good. I'm you sure not a lot helping. of people that moved down to Africa because they love the country totally. also had the same. I totally. Like rose colored glasses the, when it came to the, what they were doing. Yeah. The evil men in this world uh, uh, build their worlds off the backs of idealistic people. Absolutely. How many times in stories have you seen people who have like, oh, I didn't mean it to be a weapons before, like in real yeah. genius when they're building all that stuff. They didn't realize they were building it for a weapon system, like stuff like that. It's constant in films and constant. Right in real life but yeah no i think they beaumont was just like he was bad and they just made it a caricature bad guy he's so he's so, so over the top over i the told top you you're gonna hate me it's like well then punch him out or yeah. something like come on can we do something here where it's like don't just let him get away with being a shithell a shithole or something like that that's real life no i get that the shit i get that <laughs> <laughs> just think the shit would be a little less ridiculous yeah i guess i'll find i'll destroy your career i'll find any way yeah, to do it. Like, I, I know, dude. Yeah, I, he still works for you yeah. you still gotta get work out of him exactly i only hear because i can't find anyone to replace that's you that's a bad time. boss right there yeah <laughs> <laughs> supposed to inspire your subordinates <laughs> <laughs> um i guess i mean because why are we saying this is forgotten then because i'm I, i'm struggling to figure out why i i do you think people don't know about this film i think if people just don't know about it I think that the director doesn't like it. I think that Michael Douglas probably doesn't talk about it because he probably had the same opinions of Hopkins that Hopkins had about Douglas. Um, I guess, but I always remember this film. I I mean, I always know it's mid-90s. It's always in the back of my mind. Um, It was easy to find, which most 90s films aren't. Oh, that's 90s indies we have a problem with. Yeah, and this is mid to late 90s, so it's a little different. Yeah. Um, I mean, Val Kilmer has got a bunch of other films as well. I mean, this is when he was like hot. This is like he was doing movie, 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 movie. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, but yeah, I think that that's probably the reason is when your director doesn't like the film, the writer doesn't like the film. Michael sure. Douglas probably doesn't. Oh, oh, talk. I think Goldman likes the movie. I just don't think he likes what happened to the character that Douglas oh, just played. The yeah, yeah, character. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, they don't talk about it that much, or they talk about it in a negative connotation. It doesn't kind of take off. It doesn't really go anywhere. I see. I think this is one of those films that you. I think if it's on TV, people might who have seen it before be like, oh crap, I forgot about this movie, and they'll watch it. Well, I don't, sure. you know what I mean? I don't, I think it's one of those type of forgotten films where you forgot you even saw it and you forgot you even liked it. Um, cause I don't, even though that we've talked about some of the things that we didn't like about it or some of the things maybe not that we didn't like, but we didn't think hit really well. I think that generally, like, I still look favorably on this movie. Oh, this is still, I still think this is a good movie. Yeah. And I think I didn't realize about a lot of the behind the scenes stuff, which isn't as terrible. People just don't get along sometimes. I get it. And, oh, like, yeah. you know, you're, you're shooting on location in Africa and you're shooting essentially an action film. You're already asking for problems. You're already asking for, you know, what we can go wrong will go wrong. Everyone Absolutely. knows about that. So, the, you know, that I get that. That's just a tough shoot. You know, we've talked about the movie Sorcerer and how bad, tough a shoot that was. Yep. It's the same kind shooting of idea. Yep. Yeah. Um, I think you have to know that going in. I mean, uh, I, I don't, I never like hearing about people complaining about their times on movie. Like, Oh, I hate this movie. I don't like this one. Cause it's just like, well then, then you should have walked away a weekend. Right. That kind of thing. But it's still, I think it's still, I think it hits more than it misses. And I think I still enjoy it. I still enjoy scenes. I still, oh, the yeah. stuff with the lines, I think this, the action stuff, I even, even the character interactions, even like the dialogue, even just some of the, some of the moments I really liked. Yeah. Remington is introduced poorly with ridiculous lines, but then right after that, I feel like he calms down. He becomes an actual human. He, um, and they're he does him and Patterson. I like that. It's not adversarial. They become buddies pretty quick. Patterson just like Remington, you're going to listen to me because I'm an expert hunter. He's just like, okay, but see, I understand what you're saying about the entrance of Remington and how it's cheesy and hammy, Mm -hmm. but it works because for a year and a half, all we would say was, I'm the the devil has come to Savo. I am because it's an awesome line. So it, I get in the context of the film, you're just kind of like, uh, but like, do you think Douglas was like, hold on, I got something for the trailer. It's because he's (laughs) choosing so much. It's just like, I am the devil. And you're just like, yeah. (laughs) So I don't think it matters. Uh, I get it. I get what you're saying, but I also understand like, there's a reason why I was saying it for a year and a half. I probably (laughs) will continue to say it. (laughs) So no, because there's just, it's, it's like, it's like, it's, it's cinema. Like, you know I mean? Like that's what it is. And you remember that. And, I think that's why it's it's so memorable to me. Sure. I think the movie shot well. I think it looks good. 
I think it still holds up. The fact that they use the actual lines is probably why it still yes. holds up. Um, and it doesn't shy away from the gore and the, the ickiness of it. Like it doesn't hide the fact that they're eating these people. You oh see yeah. The body. These, that first body, the head's been eaten off. Ugh. It's, it's, yeah. it's like, wow. They got a taste for it. The power of nature is right there. Oh, of course. Yeah. You're, you're encroaching on their territory. Right. You know, and I always like seeing Val Kilmer as the lead. I like Val Kilmer a lot. I do too. Oh, well, yeah, I do too. He's got a certain energy when he does his rules. It's kind of understated. Um, he doesn't like go like, he doesn't go big when he does his parts. His parts are very small. He's very calm whenever he does anything. I feel. Oh, well, he's got a confidence in what he's doing. So yeah, it's that, a, it's, a com- yeah, yeah. it's not like a small. It's just this confidence in his line. Whether you like them. whether you like his performancing or whether you like him or not. Um, obviously, everyone knows he's in the news now because he's dealing with uh, health issues. But like you know, I think that you. It's definitely, you can't say that he's not trying. You know what I mean? Like he definitely right. cares. And like, it's an interesting thing. way that you don't see a lot of actors approach the rules. Oh no. Is. Yeah. A lot of actors as they get older or as they get maybe famous, quote unquote famous, or they, they start, they're successful. They kind of stop learning or forget like what, you know, like about like what they're trying to do. Like right. you know, they lose focus and you know, you it's, it's evident, you know, you can tell right. when an actor is just kind of like not phoning it in, but it's just like, they're not really... They don't really love the film they're doing or and love I, the role. We should say that, you know, Hopkins did say Val Kilmer gave like his all. For oh, of movie. course. We talk about Douglas and Hopkins not getting along and how uh, Goldman didn't like Douglas's changes. But Val Kilmer was really into this film and had the same kind of love for Africa. and always wanted to do something in Africa, yeah. much like his character of Patterson, which I thought was cool. No, yeah. He shared that interest that Patterson had. No, I, that's what I'm saying. I'm saying that I never got that impression with Kilmer. Like he's all in. Oh yeah, for what sure. He's doing, yeah. Um, no, absolutely. Also, I'm just realizing now the poster is two lions silhouetted. <laughs> First time I'm realizing. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right then. I think I am going to try to read that book. I'm going to try to find. I can get it's on Amazon. Uh, the Man Eaters of Savo, which is written by Patterson. It's only like 170 pages, something like that. So I'm I'm going to try to I'm going to try to get that. Try to read it. It's, it's nice. not even at the library. I, I, really, I, the library doesn't have it. A little upset about yeah, that. Crap, but. library. Whoa, 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 sorry, whoa, sorry. whoa, whoa. But the Milford not... Public Library has got it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, where can they find us? Uh, you can find us at ForgottenCinemaPodcast.com or ForgottenEntertainment.com as we are part of the Forgotten Entertainment family. You can also find us on the social medias, Instagram, uh, Facebook. We're there. Check out the lobby where we can talk about Ghost in the Darkness. I think, as you can tell, Field and I uh, would be very uh, happy to talk Ghost in the Darkness <laughs> with you. You can also find our podcast. I mean, you're listening to it right now, but check it out on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, wherever you get it. Wherever you're listening to it right now, go ahead and drop us a rating, a review, subscribe. All that good stuff helps us. And uh, that's it. All right. So next week, Season 11 kicks off, rolls on. We are going to be doing super thin Christian Bale in The Machinist from 2004. Rail thin. Did you see this? I've never seen it, but I do know that he got skinny by just eating apples and smoking cigarettes. Well, this is before he did Batman. Right before he did Batman. Batman Begins. Unhealthy for Batman Begins. Yeah, yeah. He, he had a, he has to stop doing that. <laughs> I think he said he wasn't going to do it after he did Vice. He was, that was his last big body yeah, change. Yeah. So what we're going to do in the machinist next week. Uh, that's it. I got nothing else. You got anything? I want to go to a zoo and check out some lions now. All right. I'm Mike Fields. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Mike Butler. And this has been Forgotten Cinema.